James Webb Telescope, STS-131, and Today in Space History on your Space Vidcast for March 30th, 2010. As most of you know, the Hubble Space Telescope has had its last repair, which is what much of the new movie Hubble 3D is about. Not to worry, though. As Hubble will end its days sometime around the year 2020 peacefully, there's a new telly on the block that's just raring to go. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short. Under construction is the premier telescope of the next decade. A next generation space telescope designed to cause yet another giant leap forward in our understanding of the cosmos. It will carry some of the most advanced technologies ever placed on an orbiting observatory. articulated mirror segments, 2.75 times the diameter of Hubble's primary mirror. Micro shutters, wavefront sensing and control subsystem, 12 by 18 meter, 5 layer captain based sun shield. The Webb Telescope, a revolutionary tool able to study every phase in the history of our universe. The Webb Telescope. As you can see, there is a lot of excitement around this new telescope. Now, the JWST will not be a complete successor of Hubble's because it won't be as sensitive to all the light wavelengths that Hubble is. The main scientific goal is to observe the most distant objects in the universe, or to steal from some famous words, where no man has seen before. If you can't wait for the Webb telescope, then fret not. SCS-131 is only six days away from launch. Starting late on April 4th and going into April 5th, Space Vidcast will be streaming live coverage of STS-131's launch in high definition. Not only is SpaceVidcast.com the only place on the planet that you can get live, high-definition streaming of shuttle launches, but you can also ask your questions of astronauts, reporters, and crew working down at KSC during the launch. If you can't watch one of the final four launches in person, at least watch it in HD with us. Today in space history, Rocketdyne was awarded in 1964 a contract for the production of 76 F-1 rocket engines to be used on the first stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. The F-1 engine was the most powerful single-nozzle liquid-fueled rocket engine ever used in service. 
These are the engines that were used to first get humans to the moon and were the driving force of the most powerful rocket ever built. And of course, don't forget to join us this Friday at 2 a.m. Coordinated Universal Time for a live interview with Ed Buckby. Mr. Buckby was NASA PAO working with Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts and is also the founder of Space Camp. Grab a copy of his book, The Real Space Cowboys, from Apogee Books and join us to ask your questions of Ed live.